Who's got number one talk show in Vegas? Yeah. Who's going to leave it all there on the set tonight? Yeah. Who's going to have a lot of fun doing it? Yeah. Probably use the Philippines up three. One, two, three. Yeah. Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, your co-host, Jillian Minter, and Jeremy Martin. Music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, founder of My Vagabond Soul, Bonnie Gore. From Pawn Stars, Beard of Knowledge, Mark Paul Patton. Musical performance by Gia Coleone. And now, let's give it up for the man who won't get us in trouble with the FCC, Mr. Jeremy Martin. Yeah, no. Thank you, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Welcome to the Downtown Podcast. We have a good time tonight, am I right? Have a good time? Yes, yes. How you doing, DJ? I feel great. I you love good? that kick. That was awesome. Hey, that was my Elvis kick, man. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Hey, uh, I don't know if you guys know DJ Lenny. Sometimes you'll see him riding a beach cruiser around downtown. Tell us a little bit about that beach cruiser, because no one makes it look cooler than DJ oh, well, Lenny. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. She's a beauty. Her name is Betsy. Ah. She has her own hashtag, Downtown Pet Betsy. You can find, find out uh, what I she's up to it. just by... Uh, a bike with a hashtag. <laughs> Only you, man. Like I said, the coolest guy in the world. Well, my name is Jeremy Martin, and I'm standing here for Jason Outlaw, who normally does the monologue, but he's up in New York pleading his case with the FCC, uh, trying not to get banned from cable television, I guess. Uh, yeah. If you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about, check out our last few episodes, and you'll be like, oh, he should probably be banned from television. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys and uh, talk a little bit about what's going on in the world around us. In China, a 50-year-old woman who was taking her first flight ever accidentally deployed the plane's evacuation emergency slide. You know what I'm talking about? The, she was looking for the restroom. Yeah, it was the first time ever someone evacuated an entire plane when they just wanted to evacuate their bowels, <laughs> right? Yeah, just in case you thought we were too classy to start the night off with a poop joke, <laughs> we're going there right away. That's right. Uh, Christians around the world celebrated Easter a couple weeks ago. Anyone celebrate Easter in here? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome resurrection of Jesus. But new evidence has come out and come to light they believe they have found where the body of Jesus is. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty stirring. Uh, the problem is that they found it in Mexico, so it's probably just Jesus. <laughs> so, nothing to worry about. A lot of them out there, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of them there. Uh, the Department of Justice has confirmed that they finally broke into the San Bernardino shooter's phones. That's right. And uh, what they found was actually very alarming. The attacks were supposed to take place weeks earlier. Yeah, yeah, which proves that even terrorists get caught up wasting time on Facebook. So, <laughs> Candy Crush. Oh, wait. <laughs> Things to do. Things to do. It happened. Uh, there's a, an LA police captain is suing Elton John for sexual harassment. That's right, when he was working his private security for a concert, he said that Elton John, the music icon, made some suggestive comments to him. But I think he'll end up uh, dropping the suit when he realizes that the line, I'm a rocket man, is just a song lyric. It's not a line, right? Oh, another kick. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Lenny, right on cue as usual. All right, in politics, Hillary Clinton's uh, approval ratings and favorability among women is dropping drastically. Yeah, when Hillary was asked about this, she said she, she didn't really understand what was going on, but she thought it might have something to do with a sexually transmitted disease. Right? That's, that's how they, they continue to ask her. She's like, well, yeah, uh, women everywhere just keep running up to me yelling that they feel the burn. So I, <laughs> <laughs> you feel the burn out there? Anyone feel it? Yeah, they've, they've, they have things. You feel the burn, right, Lenny? Bernie Sanders. Bernie that's Sanders. right, yeah. They have uh, some things that are like penicillin and things, so. 
Be sure to look into that. Bill Cosby back in the news. Uh, he has some accusers. They're really upset at a museum exhibit uh, that is honoring the comedian. Yeah, the accusers told the curators that they want them to acknowledge the accusations within the museum exhibit. So the curators are considering changing part of the exhibit to read, women say the darndest things. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I took out one of the other ones. Uh, <laughs> lastly, lastly, in Hollywood news, Sylvester Stallone, uh, just recently in an interview, was quoted as saying that as long as he can stand up, he will continue to make movies, which led the reporter to then begin breaking Sylvester Stallone's legs <laughs> so that he would just stay down, Rocky. Just stay down. All right, hey, we got a wonderful, wonderful show for you tonight. Up next, we got Bonnie Gore with my bag of my soul. DJ Lenny, take it away. interview tonight is one of our very own podcast cast members. Yeah. She is the yeah. founder of My Vagabond Soul. They just launched their first magazine. She's also the blogger from Brunching with Bond. She's the lead singer of Natural Fringe. Yeah. And most importantly, she's one of my best friends. Right. Let's bring her out. Please welcome Miss Bonnie Gore. Yeah. Hey, girl. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you on the, the other side. <laughs> yeah, how the tables have turned. I know, right? Yeah. I heard you've kind of been a little bit of a diva, but we're handling it. You guys, you guys didn't get my writer. I know, so go ahead. Get it out. Tell us, tell us what happened. I sent a writer months ago for this, and I didn't have anything in my fitting room, so. Something about red m Let's just get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the problem with red m &Ms? I hate them. They taste and like Tylenol. <laughs> I don't get it. We'll get, we'll get more into that later. So you're the founder of My Vagabond Soul. Yes. Which is a blog you've had for a while now. And you just launched your brand new magazine. So tell us what inspired you to start the blog. Well, um, originally I was a co-founder with one of my best friends that I grew up with. And we started our own businesses after college. And we didn't know what we were doing. We just like, how do we get a business license? What about taxes? And aside from all the business end of things, we sucked at everything at first, and still sometimes. And we had all these people around us that we aspired to be like that were already successful. OK, so we started our own businesses. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> we started our own businesses. We didn't know what we were doing. So we wanted to find out from the people that we aspired to be like how they got to where they were. And we started a blog interviewing them, asking them, you know, the same five simple questions. Um, and just started blogging about it. We wanted to find out for ourselves, but it started to inspire other people to chase their own dreams as well. Yeah, so the tagline is, what is your dream and how are you chasing it? Yeah, that's like what we kind of hashtag things as. Um, but we have five questions. That's our first two. We ask, what is your dream? Um, how are you chasing it? What do you know now that you wish you knew then? And then could be yesterday or 15 years ago. Um, what advice do you have for new business owners or artists or musicians, depending on the person that we're interviewing, and what music, books, or art inspire you? And it's really inspiring and crazy the kind of answers we get out of that. Yeah, so what made you take it to the next level? Because it's been a blog for a while, but this is the first magazine we have, so. Right, yeah, is, I, that took a, <laughs> issue. It took a really long time to actually do that because I felt like having a image-rich blog felt like, I was like, oh, well, we already have a magazine online. We'll just publish it. Um, <laughs> it turned out to be a lot harder to actually format it, but that was the original thought process. And we'll just take some of the interviews and, um, and turn them into articles. And that's what we did. Awesome. And we even have some great photos Don't in here. This. My favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, does it want you great? Yeah. She hates me. So, but you blog about a bunch of different things. So your newest venture is brunching with bonds. So right. You took like people talking about their dreams and their passions, and then you went the total opposite direction. People and crying about, like, during the day, drinking about what. Yeah, now it's like all about bottomless. No, so I'm just kidding. Brunching with bonds is fun. We don't cry. Um, 
I, well, I love to day drink. Not a lot of people know that about me, but um, I love brunch. And I do it all the time, and I love to write. So I figured, <laughs> I do. And so I figured, why not write about it? And so I started doing that. And it's kind of funny, because people really took to that. <laughs> they really like it. So, I know. It's like taking off so quickly. And yeah. people want to come. And it's like Yeah, it's like turning into a thing. So. Yeah. So if you guys want to brunch with Vaughn, just follow me on social media, and you'll know where to go. Try to get on the list, man. Get on the list. <laughs> now, let's touch on your band, too, because Natural Fringe is like this great band. Right. Well, I don't want to here. overshadow the rest of yeah. our guests, but <laughs> with that Touch band. That. <laughs> but it's my fictitious band that I'm the lead singer and cowbell player for. We have almost 60 followers on Instagram. <laughs> and um, we have a holiday single. And also, uh, find a link to the magazine, which is on jumag, J-O-O-M-A-G.com. And then bonniergore.com, you can find the link to all of my blog posts, including Brunchin' with Vaughn. So. Right, awesome. Well, thank you for being here and well, sitting on the other I mean, side. <laughs> I was busy, but I decided to take some time out. <laughs> so we thanks. really appreciate it. So, thanks, awesome. guys. <laughs> give it up for your host, Dylan Jorgensen. Uh, it's a pleasure. OK. Well, I am super, super excited for this, this next guest. So you guys probably know him as the Beard of Knowledge. He was named that after the executive producer of Pawn Stars called him that. But the reason he's called that is because he has over 20,000 history books in his house, and he's the director of the Clark County Museum. Put your hands together for the Beard of Knowledge, Mr. Mark Hall Patton. Come on out. Come on. Come on. How you doing? Oh, it's a pleasure. Good to see you. <laughs> that scruff doesn't work, you know. You gotta, you gotta get, gotta get some length to it. Go for that patriarch look. Do you guys think I could just like eat? Can I just like yeah. eat? I, yeah. I just want to like eat horseradish oh. or something, you know, like well, something you, to like. So you gotta understand, <laughs> self-inflicted oral cautery makes no sense to me. That's it. people that hurt themselves and say it's a good Listen, thing. There's a term for that. It's we not have a good to thing. you have to dumb down the big words for me, okay? Oh. <laughs> Something cautery is I just said deep. Self-inflicted oral throat. cautery. Gotcha. Hot foods. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Be careful with those. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, that's that's my reading level. Yeah, I no, like it. I appreciate it. it. You see, I'm all about the education. <laughs> right. I have twenty thousand words total in my book collection. <laughs> you know, so it's we're you get one there. Book. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so uh, the, the first thing I want to talk about is everybody when they say Vegas history goes right right to the mob, right to gambling. There's got to be something there in third place that we don't know about. What is that? Uh, there's a lot before the mob and gambling. Gambling is all right. Gambling was legal here when we first became a city in 1905, became illegal in 1910, didn't become legal again until 1931. You know, And when it became legal, it wasn't a big deal. Right. All the gambling was on block 16, block 17, which is basically the parking lots across the street from Main Street Station downtown. Okay. And that was all you could do, but nobody really cared at that point in the in the 1930s. Yeah. So it was the gambling wasn't the big deal. What at that point it was building Hoover Dam and then World War II and all the federal monies that were coming yeah. in at that point. Okay, so so I definitely don't know much about the history of Vegas, but it it seems to me like it seems like Vegas should be right where the Hoover Dam. Like weren't they <laughs> like didn't didn't the train like didn't the train come through and they need to like drop off you know equipment and stuff like that? Well, or, like, they, why they, is Vegas here? Vegas is where it's at because this is where the water was. When the tr railroad came through, that's 1905. That was no, years the water's before. in the Colorado River. Or no, you're saying no, no, like no. if you dig. The, the valley had the highest water table of any valley for 100 miles in any direction yeah. here. That's why the old Spanish trail came through here, which was neither old nor Spanish. It was New Mexican <laughs> trail, but Fremont didn't know any better. It's OK. And, and so when the, when the railroad the was coming thing. through here, they couldn't go down to where the river was. It was too deep. There was no way of getting down there and back up. Because when you build a railroad, it has to be flat. Railroads can only have about a 2% grade. Is that a railroad joke one guy got? <laughs> He's like, they got to be flat. He's yes, like, that's my thing. Flat. It does. <laughs> you know, and so it, it had to come through here. And the, the water was at the, what we think of as the Springs Preserve. You know the yeah. Springs Preserve? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've heard of it. Yeah. OK, there, yeah, there was yeah. a place there called Big Spring. It was called Big Spring because it was a ah, big a spring. It yeah. was 40 feet across, and there was so much water coming up in that spring that you could not dive underwater in it. Ah. You could just sit in the water, and it would hold you up. 
It's and so whatever that's where done the water in that was time, coming yeah. from. Oh, yeah. Well, you didn't want to be outside. Good. No, yeah. Fine. I would just sit in yeah, the water thing. The yeah. Water. It's all right. Life must have sucked in 1920 ish. 1905. 1905. All right. I could have been more up. Yeah, that's, that's when the, the city opened up. <laughs> That'll be my thing. I'll try guessing it at dates. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how close I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. wish you luck. Well, listen, so you have. <laughs> you have uh, these, these supposed 20,000 history books. Not supposed. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, I wanted to verify. <laughs> well, I wanted to verify if it's worth. I swear to you, it's not supposed. Okay. And that only counts in the house, not in storage. Oh, well, okay, okay. So a lot of history books. My wife, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you have all these history books. Now, whenever I read a book, it seems like sometimes the main points aren't what sticks. They have little anecdotes that mm. stick. What's something that nobody would even think to ask you about that has always just sort of been a fascinating kind of thing that pops into your head throughout? All of this reading. Well, there, you've done. There's, there's lots of little things. It, it, the first person to come through here, the first Westerner to come into what we think of as Clark County, it's a guy named Jedediah Strong Smith who came through here in 1828. Nobody had yeah. ever been here before. The Spanish had never been here before. Nobody wanted to come here. It was in the middle of nowhere. They didn't know about it. You know, and when you, when you look at an area like this, you think, oh, people were here all the time. The Spanish settled here. The Mexicans were here. <laughs> right. No, nobody Spanish wanted trail, to be yeah. here. Yeah, because the old Spanish trail wasn't even here yet. That didn't come through till 1830. And Antonio mm. Armijo came through here. He came up where the Las Vegas wash is, came up from the river. And, okay. and there was a long route up from the river at that point, not where the lake is now. Because you've got to remember, the lake is, is much deeper, much wider. The, ri the river was down about where the middle of the lake is, oh, and way down to think hundreds that, yeah. of feet. So he had to climb all the way up there, and he came up, at the, crested that, looked down in the valley, and said, there's green here. And that's why this area became known as Vegas. Vegas means meadow. Oh. So, oh. Did Las you Vegas guys, was the meadow. Did you guys know that? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a common okay. See, some people went to school here. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. This was yeah, this was I grew up grade. in Utah. We were just told Mormons were the best. Yeah. Well, we were down at <laughs> school, yeah. Well, and, and and I'll tell you. Oh yeah, Mormons Brigham Young, some, yeah. yeah, Brigham Young thought he owned this area. Yeah. The I, state of Deseret was not just Utah, it was also Nevada, it was also Eastern California, it was a chunk of New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Wyoming. I mean, he had a huge area, yeah. and the reason he sent the first settlement down here in 1855, the mission that was here, we think of it as Mormon Fort these days, yeah. was because he knew that if he didn't settle this huge tract of land, he wouldn't have it. It would be taken away uh. from him. Because the Mormons had tried to leave America. They went into Mexican territory, the only problem was America took away the Mexican territory and made it part of America, and they got stuck again. Yeah. It might even be related to him, I think. Yeah, very possibly. Yeah, he's like, yeah, from Utah. Yeah, a few kids. He's a polygamist, yeah. yeah. It's got to be related in the thing somewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, anyways, um, okay, so we can do the DNA later. <laughs> so um, you told me about earlier about a bunch of wild camels. Do you think you could elaborate on that? Because I love the thought of all these wild camels walking around downtown in, now. In the 19th century, the American army experimented with camels. They were going to use camels to go over the, the desert and that, because camels will eat anything and they can survive anywhere, and a camel can carry three times what an oxen can carry. So they brought some in. The only problem was it was Jefferson Davis that brought them in, and he was on the wrong side of the Civil War, and the Army didn't want to have anything to do with anything he had done. But civilians had figured out, hey, these guys can work hard. So they brought in camels through San Francisco, yeah. and they used them as express trains in the gold fields and all of that. And when a gold area would you know, start playing out and, and they didn't need the express service, they just let the camels, the camels go. go. They would wander around in the so desert weird. and yeah. they could eat anything. And then when somebody wanted to create a new express company, they'd go out and round up a bunch of camels yeah. and start so, using but them But they're again. so funny looking. Like I looked well, at, but they could carry so yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, they're incredibly well adapted. Oh, yeah. But it said on Wikipedia they can like close their nose. Like, you know, they can just like they close can, it up. And that's why they do that. Well, they can know, hold like, in and <laughs> reprocess 95% yeah. of the water that they would breathe out. Yeah. What we breathe out when we're exhaling, they can hold all that water in. That's why they can hold water for as long as they can. Yeah, and I'm in the, the, I'm thing, in the candle. I, I, yeah. I've got to tell you, though, because it's, it's only in Nevada. We are, and you can tell, tell that they did use camels here. This is the only state that ever passed a law that said it was illegal to use camels on state roads. That was a Does state that affect law. Anybody you could here? not use camels on state roads. <laughs> Is that a problem? Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, the problem with the camels is eventually they stopped using them, and both the Indians and the whites figured out that one, you could capture them, sell them to, to circuses, so they went away there. But two, they were really Aww. slow and not real smart, and you could shoot them and eat them, and they tasted fairly good. So the ones Aww. that didn't go to, to circuses got it. That's sad, but I can totally see them walking up to a guy yep. and just being like, mm, food, you know, like, oh. But I'll tell you, the one, the one funny thing, in the extreme south end of this county, in, I'd have to look up the date, but it was in the 1860s, a bunch of guys moving camels got surrounded by the Mojave Indians. The Mojave Indians were tough Indians. They were going to attack, oh. and they couldn't get away, and they didn't know what to do, so they finally just everybody mounted the camels and actually did a camel charge through the Indians. And the Indians no. went, what? They got out of the way because these you know, camels were They're big. Like, yeah, double hump things yeah, coming right. at us. Yeah. You know, you know. And, and so they actually like, got to go away. recalibrate. Yeah, yes. like we don't know. And this is the this, only yeah. camel charge in the history of the United States. <laughs> but it was in our county. The only camel charge. <laughs> That is the coolest thing that has ever been said on the show. <laughs> Thank I you. love how you punched it out at the end. Yeah, the only camel charge we're known for. That's right. Well, in in the United States. Yeah. Ooh. We we got to have something we're number one in. Yeah, camel charging. You know, we, we've already got house foreclosures. We got that one down. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now let's go with the camel charge. Yeah, I have to go live. Yeah, live with the camels again. I don't know. Okay, so um, I want to talk about this book you wrote. It's called Asphalt Memories. I didn't even understand how fun it was going to be to read until you brought it, because it's actually broken down into every street that we have here in Vegas. It's, it's about 600 streets. I, what I did was, when I first got over here, I started looking at streets, and I said, why is it named this? Why do we have a street named Gas, and they can't even spell gas? Yeah. You know, what is this about? And it was, yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually named for Octavius Decatur Gas, who owned the Las Vegas Rancho. So what I did was start looking up. What, who these streets were named for and why were they named that way. Yeah. And I eventually put it together and, and we published it. It's available at the County Museum. It's only $10. All the money, every dollar, every dime, every penny goes to the museum. I get nothing oh, you're out not of getting, it. You're it's not getting rich on this? No, 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 no. I gave that to the museum. Are you are you rich and famous now, or just no? No, I'm just now? famous. Okay. <laughs> Take rich if you have a choice. Okay. <laughs> um, so I live on Las Vegas Boulevard in Ogden. Can you tell me oh, the story? Peter Skeen Ogden. Oh. Peter Skeen. Well, all the downtown streets: Fremont, uh, Clark, Lewis, Ogden, Bonneville. These are named for early explorers that were in Nevada, not necessarily down here, but in Nevada. So when William Andrews Clark laid out Clark's Las Vegas town site. He used explorers' names for the streets, and then just numbers the other way. Ah. The only one that he used that wasn't an explorer was Stewart, and that was named for Helen Stewart. You didn't even need to look it up. It's all just in that Xerox brain of yours, huh? Trust me. Okay. Don't ask me my kids' birthdays. Uh, Those get lost. Oh, you, yeah. okay. So the girl who's in Mensa, she's in Mensa. She said earlier. Um, oh, cool. What street do you live on? I'm curious. Um, I actually live in Anderson. That's right. Oh, but what about I the street? He's, he's going to tell you the story about the street. That's okay. That's okay. Well, it depends. What's the story behind Wigwam and Gibson? Well, okay, Wigwam was just named because they were naming the streets with W's. Oh. Warm Springs and oh. Wigwam. And However, Gibson was not named for Mayor Gibson. It was not named for his father, who was State Senator Gibson. It was actually named for his grandfather, who was one of the people in charge of the basic magnesium plant. There you go. <laughs> and it's in the book. Okay. So we're running long time, but I want to talk about the, there, there's a lot of museums. I didn't even realize there were so many museums in Vegas. Yeah. So first, tell us what other museums are, and then we'll finish with yours. OK. Well, we've got the National Atomic Testing Museum, the Neon Museum, the Mob Museum, the Natural History Museum, the Mormon Fort, the State Museum, the Springs Preserve, the, uh, thank you, Erotic Heritage Museum. Thank my wife there That's for that wife? one. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you and, did a and good part, job getting married to her. Hey, yeah. we, hey, it's worked for 37 and a half years. I'm going with it. You know? but, and then, of course, we've got my three museums, which is the Clark County Museum, the Howard W. Cannon Aviation Museum, which is the one if you go through McCarran Airport. It's all the history exhibits there, and the ones in, in Henderson Executive Airport and North Las Vegas Airport, and the Searchlight History Museum down in Searchlight. OK. And there's more. That's right. Just a, an over and then, and your museums, um, they're kind of known for the big things. I looked at photos. They look here at trains and like giant things well, that I've, are hard I've to got, move there. I've yeah. got 30 acres at the county museum. Yeah. I've got 20 restored buildings. I've got a ghost town out there. I've got walking trails, nature areas, oh, a railroad train, uh, uh, 
a boxcar and all kinds of other rolling stock. We've got the depot from Boulder City. We've so got the candlelight wedding chapel. Did you know that 5% of all the weddings in the United States every year happen in Clark County? Yeah. Yeah. And if you were married After in the candlelight probably. wedding chapel, you can, you can come out and give us your picture and we'll put you in a book there. But uh, oh, cool. we don't do any weddings there. Don't ask me. No. Uh, <laughs> Weddings are wonderful things when it's yours. They are not when it's somebody else's. Um. <laughs> okay, well, everybody, we should check out these museums. I'm excited to learn more about the history of Las Vegas. Thank you so much for coming out and Thank talking you. to us. We really appreciate it. Everybody, Sorry, check out the book, As All Thank Memories. You all. Thanks for coming out. Not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Gia Khalil. My name's Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gia K. See me stepping with a bag, one with a bag of money. And all one me try to spend it, no me couldn't donate. Should I see how oh, no, the weekend looking never lovely? And when me stepping at this spot, better know me name. Stepping with a bag, one with a bag of money. And all one me try to spend it, no me couldn't donate. Should I see how oh, no, the weekend looking never lovely? And when me stepping at this spot, better know me name. Me wicked eye, you could never test I. Where you need I supply. Armed and dangerous, shine so bright you can see me in the dark. Do what everything like with the panoas are, yeah, 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 yeah. Me winner, them lose. See me turn up, oh, me supposed to. Me never know if be with no hater. So if you want no need to see you later, call me a rock star. Me no mix up and mingle at all. Where we tell them, say we from the window to the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GK. See me stepping with a bag, one with a bag of money. And all one me try to spend it, no me couldn't donate. You should have seen, oh no, the weekend looking ever lovely. And when me stepping at this spot, better know me name. Me wicked eye, uh, you could never test I. Where you need I supply. And then, shine so bright, you can see me in the dark. To what everything like you depp on was dark, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 me winner, them lose. See me turn up, oh, me supposed to. You never know if it be with no hater. So if you want no need, we see you later. Call me a rock star. Me no mix up and mingle at all. Where we tell them, say we from the window to the power. That's it. <laughs> we appreciate y'all. Bless. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew and to all you podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m. right here at the Inspire Theater. Uh, party with us at the rooftop for the after party. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Downtown Podcasts. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace, love, and be kind to one another. <laughs>